for us. I wanted to um, share something that I've been doing as a longtime book publicist who's like merged into presenting um, and promoting events and festivals in these last five years. You know, those are products that don't have a tangible product, right? Like a book. So what I've been doing lately is um, love it or hate it, suggesting to the client to set money aside for a Facebook ad. Um, and it's just like creating a media list of applicable media types of people that would be interested in this event rather than a book. But you go through and you can tag certain um, demographics. If it's an article or an event related to Japan, you go through and you create your Facebook ad that links to your social media site or to the author's or the event's website. And you just select your keywords. And that way you're targeting the demographic to a very particular niche that can really be perceptive to your book or your event or your film festival or your, you know, widget. I don't know. That's terrific. Can you do that on Google too? Can you take a Google ad for an event or a book? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, can. you can. But, oh, but I don't know if you can turn Also on Facebook with ads, what is so great is you can change them at any moment. So if you're not seeing click-throughs, you can change the picture, change the copy, or what have you. So you really get to see exactly what's going on, what's working, and what's not. And you set your own price. Right. So that's the other beauty of it. If you have $500 in your budget, you can run a targeted campaign for $500. Yeah. And you can do the same on Google to answer your question. One thing I might want to ask um, the professionals up here that have had experience with Facebook ads is what is your, um, how do you decide when to use a pay per click or a pay per Impression. A paper click versus a paper impression. Uh, yeah, you can. So, as for folks that don't know, obviously you can you can pay a certain amount for each click, which ultimately results in a visitor to your page, and you know, that can range from ten cents to four dollars. Um, or you can pay for a thousand impressions, some amount of money, and that's just all they're going to tell you is somebody saw it because it was on the page there, but I don't know if they really looked at it or clicked on it. Um, I'm I'm always going for clicks now because you can and. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the, it's shocking how few people do click, but that's probably even, you know, similarly small number of reading them, and it's, at least it's measurable, and I can kind of see what works and try different ad campaigns, but I can never tell any of that with impressions. I don't know if, if, the, if they liked what I said or didn't. I really, you just know from clicking. Um, I know there's still places for, you know, brand advertising where, you know, that's where impressions are still valuable if you're just trying to get the, the name out there and make it familiar to people, so there's a place for it. Um, we're so small and you know, trying to be really careful that we're, we're just focused on pay-per-click so far and um, it's, it's, it's challenging because what happens is you're, you're bidding, uh, this is something I've learned in the last few months, you, you, you could find an ad you know, that looks like it works for a dollar or fifty cents, um, but another competitor might be coming in and trying to advertise something else. They're competing for that same real estate and can kind of bid the price up to a point where it doesn't make sense for you anymore. So you're always trying to find the price that works and if it doesn't work stop <laughs> you know if, if you've tried a couple different ad combinations because you there may be other economics going on there that just make it not work for you and, and frankly I've had trouble finding good um, you know uh, uh, campaigns so far that, that I that seem to work for us uh, online it's been more about um, publicity PR and, and other efforts are really seem to be the best ROI for us so far On the uh, on the paper clicks, what kind of conversion rate do you get? Um, I'm just you know wiring up our site enough to be able even able to tell. But um, if you get a, you know for us a measure of a success right now is just registering for our site. I can't yet tell if they're buying the book unfortunately because then there's a click and then they go on to Amazon and um, but you know typically conversion rates can be you know 0.5 for buying something. Um, and my last site, we dealt with this um, to turn a, uh, a registered user, someone who sort of clicked it and come to your site and at least is, is interested in it, to someone who buys something. You know, the numbers are between 0.4% and 4% is kind of the range um, that, that, I, that I've seen. And if you're outside of that, if you're above it, good for you. But don't be surprised if you're even lower and you have work to do to, to get the conversion up. Um, so that's, that's the constant battle. Samantha? I spent some oh, I spent some time at an e-commerce startup uh, working with um, Google AdWords and whatnot and 
I found that um, comparatively uh, between Google and Facebook, there was more value from Facebook than there was from Google AdWords um, because it's pretty competitive and oversaturated. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, for, for my book, I interviewed a lot of SEO people outside the book industry. And they, SEO, SEO. So search engine optimization and social marketing, uh, social, yeah, media. social media marketing people. And they uh, all said that for books, it is makes no sense to do Google Ads. That the price is just too high and that Facebook is a much, much better bet. Is that for all Google Ads or... Um is that just for the keyword ads that turn up the, the text ads on the side of a search, or is that also for display ads that serve up to like blogs? No, no, that's a, no. Sorry, that would be a different thing. But when you do a search and the ads that show up on the side, they said there's really not a book that could measure up to the numbers that you have to get. <gasps> Everybody follow that? Yeah. Okay, Helena. The titles or for customers? Uh, yeah, for, for us, um, uh, so far it's been our, our editorial staff typically has a relationship with a writer and they're in conversations with them and it's not unlike the magazine model that they were used to. They have a sort of team of, or a network of, of writers they trust and they kind of bat ideas around over the phone and, um, and then someone will get interested. Um, so, so far that's worked for us. We've had some inbound inquiries lately um, because people just heard about us and, and want to try their hands at sort of writing these shorter form uh, ebooks. You know, maybe they have something that's current like Holly Finn's story um, and see us as a, as a good model. Um, so, so, so far, you know, maybe because we're new and we just have a few titles that we're kind of just working our own network. Um, the agents have become involved in some, in maybe a third of the cases. Often it's just right with the writer, and again, I guess that's not uncommon in the magazine world. Um, and 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 the agents have have become involved uh, in a few cases, just more more in the negotiations. And I, and I should say we try to make our deal very simple for writers. There's sometimes an assignment fee if there are costs associated with travel, um, but we're a small company, and and we're we're trying to make sure that we're sharing in the. Uh, profits here if, if things work out, so we, we get as close as we can to splitting 50-50 anything we make after what Amazon or Apple takes uh, on their distribution fee. Um, it's a new market, so we'll figure out what number that needs to be in the long run, but so far that feels fair to people. Um, and, and so uh, what, we, what we then will offer is sometimes a small assignment fee if there's some travel or um, uh, other expenses that's an advance against the 50-50 um, the rev, rev, revenue sharing. Um, and then we do a fair amount of editing work for the writers, and you know, as I've learned talking to our editors, I say great writers know they need good editors, and so they value that part of what we do. Um, and so we're spending a lot of time shaping the story and copy and proofing and 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 um, and getting it ready for production. Then we do all the painful work of uh, unfortunately these ebooks are not that easy to get ready to put on the ebook stores. They have a, several different formats. They all have different ways of populating the page that you see at Google Bookstore or Amazon, and it's we have a full-time person just you know just to do one book every two weeks. We've got somebody full-time just managing that process, which takes some of the burden off, obviously off the writer. Uh, but that's one of the other things we're doing for them. Um, does that answer? It does. Thank you.